So I just saw Adam Land. <laughs> That's not his name. <laughs> I just saw James Wan's horror film, The Nun, which is another spin-off of The Conjuring, and it was actually pretty good. Just kidding, it sucked. So, anyways, this movie's about as enjoyable as getting finger blasted by a cactar. I'll, I'll say this, I'll do a brief synopsis of what I think of each of The Conjuring films before I get into explaining why I hate this one. So, the original Conjuring, it's a movie that came out quite a while back, I believe. Heck, my mom was still alive back then. Be sure to donate to my Patreon to make me feel better, guys. This totally isn't just baiting you guys, like, using sympathy to take your money from you. It's pretty good, if I remember correctly. I might be a bit more harsh on it nowadays, because I was... A lot younger back then and I like was not very critical with movies and I just hate jump scares I remember there were a few dumb jump scares in The Conjuring I didn't really care much for the doll but the acting performances were really good if I remember correctly the cinematography was good uh, then you fast forward a bit and you get the spin-off Annabelle and it's one of the worst horror movies ever made in fact Nothing really happens in it. It's very similar to this year's Slender Man in that sense. So then Conjuring 2 came out. I saw that. That one was directed by James Wan, I think. I didn't really like it that much. I thought it was okay, but it was largely overrated. It was a very safe sequel. It largely followed the same footsteps as the first one. And the, the best parts of the movie were just nostalgic bullshit. <laughs> they just do a cover of an Elvis song, and that's the most memorable part of that whole movie. But then you got Annabelle Creation, which was a significant improvement over the original Annabelle, but it was still a piece of crap that relied way too much on jump scares. And jump scares are a thing that I'm going to be docking a lot of marks from down, down the road. I think I have to even go back and knock down a bunch of horror movies for jump scares because I wasn't ever as harsh on jump scares as I should have been right from the start. They make the movie so unwatchable that it's kind of a joke. And that movie was very predictable because it would always get quiet and then... Five minutes in, boom, jump scare. And then I'd get quiet again, five minutes later, boom, jump scare. So I didn't like that movie whatsoever. So now we've got the next installment, which is The Nun. Witness the darkest chapter of the Conjuring universe. And I find it funny how this is the Conjuring universe, and it's based on this pseudo-true story from the first one and the second one with Lorraine and some other guy or something where they're ghost hunters or something and they do exorcists I guess but I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of that is bogus and the first movie even made a reference to that where they're like yeah most of it's fake but this one's real you guys just to give it that phony BS where it's like this is the one exception where it's real you guys oh demons don't really exist all that much but when they do it's scary i don't believe in demons whatsoever this is largely why i'm not a religious person i can't suspend my disbelief for this phony supernatural stuff and that's something that's very heavily ingrained in christianity but i'm gonna get on to that later because that relates a lot into this movie because this movie's like basing it on a nun so that kind of goes without saying, it's like this Catholic movie that doesn't even understand Catholicism. It's more like catharsisism. <laughs> the Nun is probably the least interesting character in all of the Conjuring series. I don't even know anything about her even now. She appeared in a painting in the second one, and she's in the backstory of Annabelle Creation, but other than that, I remember nothing about the character. She doesn't really have any traits. And I'm gonna spoil something here, guys. This movie doesn't dive into that either. She gets made right at the start of the movie in this really cheesy sequence of jump scares. And then she's just the nun for the rest of the movie, and she's just a possessed demon, I guess. 
Unless I misunderstood, and that wasn't even the nun being turned into the nun, and she was just always like that, and she killed another nun or something? I don't know, it's stupid. It's really dumb. I give this one a nun out of ten. You know how I said Annabelle Creation relied heavily on jump scares, but they were spaced out to the point where they were really predictable? Well, it's like this movie wanted to have more suspense in it, so they had long pauses with no jump scares, but they wanted to have the same amount of jump scares, so they just bunched them all together. Now, the thing about jump scares is they're not really scary if they're done sloppily, um, and if they're not scary, what they do to compensate is they just play a loud sound. You see, you see, this is, this will make you jump. You see, this won't. <laughs> hey dude, just wanted to let you know the pizza's ready. I'm sorry. But time. Now, now you see, the thing is that, that the cheap jump scare still kind of works. Like, it's unpleasant, it's stupid, it makes me frustrated, but it still kind of works to a degree. Now, this is what the nun does. So the nun is like the worst offender, it's like brain dead. They blow their load on a, a jump scare that blows your eardrums out, and then they keep trying to line up jump scares in quick succession, and it's like, no, you, you already screwed it up with the first one, so piss off is essentially how I feel watching the whole movie. And this movie is basically a comedy, and not the funny kind, it's just basically a joke how this series has gone on so long. It was pretty much done after the first movie. Like, the first movie's fine, be done with it. Stop making all your franchises last a fucking coon's age, James Wan. <laughs> like, I guess he finally realized, hey, people like this one, let's make this one go on forever too, just like all the trash I put out before. So. Yeah, I don't like this movie at all. I'll say it's better than Annabelle, but not even as good as Annabelle Creation. So, second worst movie in the Conjuring series. Again, 0 out of 10. I think it's one of two other movies this year that I've given zeros out of 10s. One of the other ones being Slenderman, which, don't get me wrong, Slenderman is worse than this movie, but... Slenderman might very well be the worst movie of, of all time, so that's kind of damning with very faint praise. Um, th this movie tries to make itself seem like a psychological horror. Like, I saw Hereditary, and Hereditary had one jump scare in the entire movie, and it was brilliant. You see, the thing is, this movie tries to do the same thing, like, they'll have things hiding in the background and just sitting there. And I would appreciate that if that was 99% of the scares in the movie. Because I like the spooky stuff over the loud noises that make you jump. Because it's cheap. You could close your eyes and you'll still jump. It's stupid. The visuals do nothing in this movie. The visuals aren't scary. The nun looks like a fucking clown. <laughs> I, I swear, the nun's played by Marilyn Manson from like the late 90s. <laughs> but no, people are gonna watch it and be like, Ooh, it's so spooky. Oh no. I, I love this way more than trash like The Witch and... And Hereditary. Those movies weren't scary at all. They were just weird. Fuck you guys for being dumb. I'm not saying fuck you guys, because you're cool for watching me. And you probably agree with me 100%. Because that's why you ever watch reviews on the internet. Is to find people you agree with, right? You don't want to learn whether a movie's actually good or bad, like, objectively. Yeah, the sound design just sucks in this. It's 
so off balance and the jump scares aren't even balanced either. Some of them are maxed out where they'll blow your eardrums out. Other ones are just like, and, and it's just like kind of lame. All, almost all of the jump scares are just a person turns around and oh no, there's a thing there. That shouldn't be there. Um, it's just so stupid. There's no subtlety whatsoever. One thing I kind of was on board with was... There, okay, there's three main characters in this movie. You have the comedic relief farmer guy or whatever. I don't know their names, by the way. There's this nun in training sort of chick. And then there's this priest guy. And they go to investigate the death of this nun who died from a hanging there at this mansion that's been abandoned. And it, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. They're gonna, like, spend the night at this, like, Resident Evil-style mansion. Um, and then it, the one guy goes out to the forest and he gets jump-scared by a hanging nun. And that's one problem the movie has as well, is they have so many jump-scares that they can't come up with new jump scares, they just keep using the same ones over and over and over again for the whole movie. And even though a bunch of crazy shit's happening all the time, you always feel like the main characters are safe because there's only three of them. It's like, they're not gonna kill these guys off, and they don't. These guys make it through the whole movie, through some series bullshit, and there's even a scene where, like, they have... The lady has to use the blood of Christ to end the curse, but the bottle gets broken. She's being drowned underwater. The bottle gets broken. She's, like, passed out. And the nun's like, ha ha ha, I win. But then the lady spits all the blood in, in the nun's face, and the nun melts to death. But how did that blood end up in the lady's mouth? She was passed out underwater. Apparently, I guess the... She somehow pen and tellered it, like she magicked the blood into her mouth at, while she was pretending to be unconscious, while the nun was staring at her without the nun noticing her her putting this bottle to her face and ch chugging the the water in. I, I not water, the blood of Christ. It, it's so stupid. And there's like a scene early on where she's teaching children that they should question the Bible. And then this Catholic chick comes in and she's like glaring at the lady. And it's like, ooh, our lady's an outcast. She's not with the, the in crowd. She's a very progressive thinker for her time. Because this is like a period piece from like the 50s. Even though it has, like, no knowledge of how the 50s even were at all, it feels like a very Hollywood-type movie, if that makes any sense. Anyways, the dumb farmer guy is just a comedic relief through the whole thing. Everyone was laughing hysterically every time he'd drop one-liners or he'd, he'd pick up a cross and, like, cr creep around everywhere like, Oh no, I'm gonna get spooked! And... Yeah, all that jazz, and he just, like... It, it's basically like Curb Your Enthusiasm. You could plop the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme in any scene where he shows up, and it would fit perfectly. It's set up like a comedy, and it doesn't really work because the rest of the movie's so dark. It It's just tonal whiplash throughout. It's freaking bizarre. <laughs> the music also really sucked. There was a scene where this nun was... Talking to our main character, nun in training type chick, explaining the backstory behind the evil nun, Valak, who's like a demon or whatever. And as she's explaining this, she's talking, right? And they're showing you a flashback, and they're playing like the cheesiest, cartooniest horror music that consists of like one simple chord played over and over again on. Like, one of those spooky organs or whatever, and it's just like, this is terrible. Like, I'm trying to listen to this chick explain this backstory. Have, like, an ambient track playing. Have, like, some Trent Reznor thing playing in the background. Some Quake 1 music or some crap. 
Don't blow it out with this cheesy, outdated horror music. Oh, also, Farmer Guy is a French-Canadian, so shout out to French-Canadians, I guess. Doesn't really play into the movie at all. It's just sort of a thing. I guess to pass the time in the dialogue so they could tack a few seconds onto the runtime by having the guy being like, Actually, I'm French-Canadian. You know, I don't want people to know about that, though, because French Canadians are embarrassing. But yeah, there's a twist ending, like, right at the end of the movie, where it ties into the original Conjuring film, where it turns out that one of the first people that Lorraine was helping with the exorcism was the the French Canadian guy, Frenchie, from the this movie, I guess. Because I guess he got possessed by the nun in the crux of everything that happened. And then that's what led to the, the chick touching Lorraine and giving her the vision powers and seeing her husband die in the future. Um, which doesn't really matter at this point because we've already seen The Conjuring 2 at this point. We already know how it ends, so who cares? This is the problem with sequels. Like, I mean, this is a problem with prequels, especially horror prequels, because you don't really care about the characters unless it's like a really deep horror movie. And this one, like, with the whole setting, it feels like The Conjuring's really aping off of The Exorcist. And I haven't seen The Exorcist, but I already know for a fact The Exorcist is miles better than this piece of crap. Like, this is just derivative trash, essentially. And people were stoked for this movie. I had co-workers... Like, Sauger wouldn't shut up about The Nun back when, like, The Conjuring 2 first arrived in theaters. And it's like, dude, do you really think a movie called The Nun is gonna be any good? <laughs> Annabelle was trash. An Annabelle Creation was trash. The Conjuring 2 was okay at best. The Conjuring 1 was good, but that was so long ago, it'd be insanity to expect anything decent from this film. Oh, this... Also, The Nun was directed by Corin Hardy, who's only directed one other movie, so no one's ever heard of him. But yeah, The Nun sucks. Screw The Nun. I, I don't even know what else to say. This is such a mind-numbing movie. It's so trashy. It, it does every cliche in the book. Oh no, there's a creepy character. Oh, oh, I'm gonna talk to them. Oh no, their neck makes creepy cracking noises when they turn it. Oh no, it turns out my friends didn't exist at all. They were just an imagination. Oh, going back to the thing I actually liked. I totally didn't even say that. I skipped over it because I got so sidetracked with the garbage to talk about. Um, there's... There's a scene where they talk about the little little dead ringer or whatever, the little bell that they have for people who get accidentally buried alive to ring to let people know that they're still alive down there. And it's kind of tricky. They, they set it up. They show you that it's kind of windy. So you hear these things dinging and it's supposed to be kind of creepy because it's like... It, are, are there people alive down there ringing the bell? And it's like, no, it's just the wind. But one of the main characters gets, like, trapped in the coffin and he's trying to ring the bell. But then the lady shows up to save him, the nun lady, the good nun lady who's a nun in training. She shows up and all the things are ringing because it's so windy. And I was like, wow, that's actually a really clever way to kill off the, this character. And, no, she gets a magic vision, and she finds out where he is and saves him. Now, I'm pretty sure all these characters are made up, even though Conjuring 1 and 2 are based on real people. But, if not, there's a part where the priest explains a backstory where he had to do an exorcism on a kid, and the kid unfortunately died due to the demon leaving his body or whatever. And it's like... I don't believe in exorcisms at all. I think evidence of them is, like, I haven't seen any evidence of them. Unless you have video footage, that's not really evidence at all. It's just eyewitness testimony from a bunch of people who are in on the whole thing in the first place. 
I don't know anybody personally, Christian or otherwise, who has witnessed paranormal activity for real, and the ones who claim to have are kind of insane. They're, they tend to be schizophrenics and people of the like. So I don't believe in any of this superstitious, like, supernatural bullshit. So I'm gonna have a very biased opinion on this, but if this guy is real and that backstory is real, I'm gonna say he, in reality, would have killed the kid and then passed it off as an exorcism gone wrong. Because I think in those situations, the reason the victim dies is because you tortured them too much to get the demon out. <laughs> Which is essentially just torturing someone to death. So, that's my take on the matter. I wasn't there in the 50s, so I wouldn't know. Anyways, that's it for the nun, you guys. Thank you for watching my video review. I'm taking commissions at the moment, so you could pay me to draw you things. But keep in mind, I'm back at school now, so it might take a bit of time, because I gotta focus on school and on work. <laughs> but, as always guys, stay salty. to investigate the death of a nun. On September 7th, witness the darkest chapter Violet the Defiler in the Conjuring Universe. I had a series of visions when I was younger. And after each one, the same thought would be stuck in my head. What did you see? I saw a nun. Of my visions reached the church, and I was asked to accompany a priest to an abbey in Romania. What? She knew you down. God, it's here.
<laughs> hey dude, just wanted to let you know the pizza's ready. I'm sorry. Bedtime. Hey my god, Justin Bieber! Uh, hey, excuse me, do you have the time? Uh, yeah, sure, it's, um, half past- Pizza? Pizza! Hey man, if what you doing, we should, we should play some Quelf. You wanna play some Quelf? Pizza! <laughs> hey dude, you gonna finish that pizza? I'm sorry man, I'm just curious. Fuck, 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 pizza! Who smells like that? Pizza! I don't know. No, seriously, no. Who, who smells like that? Pizza! Alright, it was me. That's awful. It reeks. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. I, c I can't even- I don't even know why I stay up here. Pizza! Shut up, chicken! This is an awful British accent. Every single British person in history is going to hate me because I'm actually American. That's amazing. Pizza! <laughs>